That's right, sweet. Four, three, two, one, zero. All right, we are live. Good morning. Good morning, Bo. How are you, bud? I'm Good very morning. excited. Uh, today's Friday and exciting because it's such a great uh, temperature outside and the sun is shining. It's great to be alive, isn't it? It is. I started my day at 3.40 in the morning, got to the gym, got to the gym around 4.15, did my, did my hour and a half workout, and then uh, got ready and came to work today and I had a couple calls this morning. Yes. And, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, after really looking at a bunch of things and talking to a lot of investors or want to be investors, it really comes down to the, the principle that why people succeed and why people don't succeed Vinny. and yes. you know here here's the here's the thing that i've noticed you're either an action taker or you're not so if you want to be successful in real estate you got to figure you got to create a simple system that you will stick with like yeah. if you want to be a multifamily syndicator or investor and buy multifamily properties yep you have to do certain activities each day to get started one is you have to be able to analyze a deal obviously right you got to learn those that's your like studying you got to learn how to use spreadsheets and learn how to what to look for cash on cash returns what what signs yeah. what kind of property so besides right besides that point though you're not going to do any deals if you don't look at a deal right that's yes. that's the, that's the underlying factor Whatever you're doing, if you're a house flipper or you're a wholesaler or you're a hard money lender or you're a salesperson, you have a funnel, right? We all have a funnel. We got to yep. bring leads into the funnel. Yep. And, uh, you know, I had a meeting with Daniel Ramsey, who's got a virtual uh, uh, professional staffing company in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it clicked with me. Like everything comes down to people that have what you want or you want what they have kind of thing, right? And then, you know, let's start, look at investors. If you need investors because you're buying multifamily properties that you now you, you you can find them, now you need the other part, which is investors. So you need a funnel for your investors. So you right. gotta go to meetings, you gotta talk to people that have, this, uh, gotta have extra money that they don't know they might be able to roll their retirements into these, um, into these syndications. So. You have to build your funnels and then stay in front of them on a daily, ba you know, daily, weekly basis. You got to be top of mind. Yep. So I think I think it all comes down to that. It really like whatever you're doing in real estate or business, you have to have a sales process for that, and you have to figure out. So one, if we break down the multifamily process, one is obviously you have to understand and to be able to analyze a deal. Let's put that to the side. We get that. Yep. Number two is, is you have to have a mechanism that brings you leads, right? Like, so for example, you have to have a way of getting brokers to bring you their pocket listings. You have to have a way of having other investors that are good deal finders, bringing you deals to join venture on and, and, or wholesale deals to you. Mm -hmm. Yep. You have to, or you could be another person that's a da data guy that can, you know, then can get mom and pop type apartment people that are retiring that you can get in without any other people involved. So you have to figure out what niche you're really going to start with and then go deep with it. Right. Like, you know, your first, your first couple deals, how did you find them? Very small. I mean, you know, as you know, duplex for, no, we didn't own fourplex at all, but duplex and single family homes. But, but then the very first one I ever bought was 14 units. 14 units for $180,000. I didn't buy it in the Bay Area where we live, you and I, but we went all the way to Texas, all the way to Texas, because that's where you could afford and buy some good deals at that time. And uh, it was exciting, you know, to have that first one under my belt, my team's belt, but it took us a long time. I mean, the biggest thing I want to talk to you and I mean, not you, but all the audiences don't give up because if you give up in life, you never reach your goal. You got to find different ways to go around the mountain, through the mountain, around the mountain, climb the mountain or go and make a you know tunnel under the mountain. Right. So never, ever think that something is not has a solution, I guess, is the word. Control the controllables. 
and that's what it took us you know it took us about 9 months 11 months actually where we were working with several uh, brokers lenders back then you know and we got that 14 units and we got the 109 units the same week <laughs> i i talk about that too because we were working simultaneously on both of them as the god will have it we closed one on monday one on friday <laughs> That's right. So so I guess the moral of the story is is that you could have easily given up within that 11 month period and then you wouldn't have made, you know, the millions and millions of dollars you have over your career and created a a, a legacy for your children. You could yeah. have, I mean you were you were you were very comfortable anyways from your previous career, but yeah. yes. You would have never you you would have never created the wealth you have today and be able to help so many people if you would have given up within that 11 months. so true no yeah. that is so very true boy what you're just saying because the thing is everything in life i know we have that i think on my facebook page i put it the iceberg right see iceberg we only see the tip of the iceberg the real snow the whole berg is under the water <laughs> and that's how our life is too we look at who people are at this time but they don't really think about and know the picture what the people go through that's hidden that's hidden you only find that out when you sit down with them to ask them their mistakes and the long hours and all the hardships all the struggles one goes through to become an entrepreneur or to become a syndicator or to become anybody as a businessman right so that's so important what you said never give up have the vision and have the you know game plan blueprint right that is the word because a lot of time are not successful bo because they are always looking for free stuff let me talk about that because a lot of people are applying in my academy all right and talking to them and looking at their background they are taking too much long making small small decisions Oh my gosh this life is going to have so many decisions to make if you take 2 hours 4 hours 5 days to make a small decision you will never be able to take a big decision in life i'm telling you i mean anybody listening or watching to us should really look introspectively into their life and say my gosh why did i take so long to make such a small decision I mean people don't want to spend $100, $200, investment in their career. That is mind-boggling to me. That's totally mind-boggling, you know? I mean we should be looking at find the coach or the mentor who has done the job or where you want to go. And you know, I have come across people who are paying 30, 40,000 to be in a mastermind group, right? 50,000 60,000 even i think you shared with me there was one for 100,000 if i remember i mean these are the high top 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 people in the country but why are they there because they get something out of it that's how they grow their business that's how they learn the techniques that's how they form the habits of the successful people in that group Yeah, no, I I agree. I mean, I've been a lifetime lo- learner. I wasn't I wasn't I didn't apply myself growing up in school. And then I got into real estate and I just, you know, it's something that I'm passionate about. All different types of real estate and marketing and like sales. So it's like, you know, like the other day, I was like uh I saw an ad for uh uh a LinkedIn, you know, how yeah. to how to come up with people on LinkedIn. So I just bought this. You know, it was like $30 ebook, right? And look I go, at, "Okay. Look at that." But the difference is now what I can tell people is if you're going to buy something go deep with it okay don't buy it and put it on your shelf go deep with it explore it learn what you can and then you move on right like for example somebody got into your academy you know you got to go through everything and and then once you go through everything you go again and as you're going through it again you have to start taking action which means you have to go in and use the deal analyzer you got to figure out the numbers until you start doing that it won't take so you won't get the value out of it you got to be you got to push yourself you got to jump on the accountability phone calls the mastermind calls and you have to make little 
baby steps each day. If you're not going to, nothing will work for you, right? I mean, that's the bottom line. You can learn from a guy like Vinny who can teach you everything you need to know. <laughs> but if you don't take action, you, you're never going to buy your first multifamily property. You never will. Yeah. You never will. So It's a hard yeah. fact what you're just saying. That is the real fact. I'm telling you, I have students in my academy for two years, you know, and I tell them, hey, how come you are not progressing? You know, the reason is because they are just trying to learn here and there. They're not applying themselves. They are not burning desire. I mean, from one week to next week, they have only taken such a small step. If you take so small steps in life, it's good. Life will be gone. I mean, you know, hey, time just doesn't stop. You got to get in the ball game and play the ball. My students who are doing really well, they are the ones who are really crushing it. They have the passion. They're meeting with the investors. They're meeting with the bro brokers. You know, they're doing due diligence, you know, with, it, with me in Florida and other places. They're flying. I mean, they're flying, spending thousands of dollars to fly to meet me or to go to the, you know, our assets and be there and all that. So I'm saying it that you got to change the thinking mindset, how badly you want it. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Cause you got to really break it down. You're only one apartment away from changing your life completely, right? Your first apartment could be a game changer that could give you your 20 or 30,000 or $40,000 a month of passive income. Yeah. One apartment. Right. Yes. It one. could be a 50 unit building. Right. Or it could be you just buy a 10 unit building and then you, you know, you, you stabilize it and you increase value and then you 1031 exchange it into a, a bigger property. But until you, until you commit to it, you're never going to do it. And that's just the bottom line. And a lot of people are in life are just, they're, um, they're, con they're, they're content in their life. They're content making their six figure, hundred thousand dollar job. But the thing they don't realize is they're never going to get out of that because a hundred grand a year in the Bay area, just bring, you know, just pays your bills. Right. So when you're 60 and 70 years old, what are you going to do? You're going to have to keep on working because life is not getting cheaper. It's getting more and more expensive. Sure. So a hundred thousand dollars is not going to go anywhere, especially if you live on the West coast. So true. So true, Bo. And you know, again, I think we are stressing this so Quick, in nicely, there is so much money. Uh, a lot of people have money in their savings, in their, you know, whatever, whatever. But the retirement money I'm talking about now, there is like $24 trillion with a T, trillion dollar uh, money, retirement funds are in the Wall Street. And there is a correction coming. I mean, you know, we know that the PE ratios have gone so high. I mean, there are no incomes. But because of the hoopla, you know, the properties are worth, I mean, not properties, the companies are worth way high price to earning ratio. That's what I was talking about. The correction will come. It's been the biggest bull. But I always suggest to my family, friends, everybody, hey, diversify, diversify, diversify. And there is no better place than real estate. It's amazing. I had some family over here last night. And I was sharing with them how we take the 200,000 that is going to invest into our this, uh, you know, uh, investment. It's going to give him dividends. We call them cash flow, right, of 8%, 8%. So he's going to make $16,000 for the year, but he's equity investor. So when we sell the asset, he's going to gain more money when we sell the asset to the tune of another 40 to 50% of his investment. So that's how the model has been, you know, in my company, we've been giving pretty high returns. But the best part is in USA, the tax laws are great for real estate people. What it is is that the depreciation, accumulated accelerated depreciation, we can say bonus depreciation now with President Trump, we can write off so much Every dollar you spend the first year, you can write it off for CapEx and all these things. So the property, Bo, might be making like, let's say, one and a half million dollar profit. But mm -hmm. because of the depreciation, the accelerated depreciation of seven million 
hold on, seven million dollars minus will show on the IRS form K1 that the property made 5.5 million loss. Look at that. Even though the property made profit and all the investors got paid, <clears throat> but their K1 will show that the property LLC had a loss of 5.5 million and it's accumulated for the passive investors over the next year, next year, next year, you, you can save it. And then when there is a gain, passive gain, you can back it against it, you know? Yeah, I mean, that, and that's the power of real estate. That's why a lot of most people, I would say, I don't know what the actual numbers are, but most multimillionaires have the majority of their wealth in real estate. And it's for that reason, it's, it's, the, it's the asset you could leverage the most, and also have the the best tax incentives on. So, you know, don't get mad at people for not paying tax. Understand what they're doing to pay very limited taxes, right? Yeah. That's the real key. No, nobody, nobody should go out and blame anybody else for taking advantage of what's out there with tax incentives, right? Like it's our job to educate each other. Yeah. And our children and our families about how you do this to create wealth and legacy. So your family doesn't have to struggle like you had to struggle like I had to struggle, right? Yeah. You, we want our kids and our children to live a better life and uh, to know these principles. They don't teach this stuff in school, right? You yeah. have to, you have to get out there and listen to calls. You have to listen to get in networking groups. You have to go to events, and you got to figure out what's out there. Like you know, when I first learned about self-directed IRAs, I was <laughs> like, wow, this is great. I can get people that will lend me money. I pay them ten percent return. They're happy because they're making two or three percent. So that means they're doubling their money in three years as opposed to, you know, seven, eight, nine, or ten, or losing money potentially. So true. And so it's a win win. So I was able to tap into millions and millions of dollars that way. And so, like, you have to educate yourself and then figure out, you have to build the relationships and then figure out how to tap into that money because we all start typically with zero money or very little money. So yeah. we have to use our uh we have to learn and, and then use intellectual capital to create money right and then and then once you create money you still use other people's money because you then you put your money somewhere else you're still always going to use other people's money that's the way the world works to create a lot of wealth i mean boy you said something really really special let's talk about that see all the companies when they do the ipos right initial public offering which we call it what are they doing? They are collecting money from all over the globe, from the people by share, by selling shares, by selling stock. And they are using other people's money actually to even when a startup is happening, guess what? With a startup, they are getting the seed money from the investors. So the whole economy structure business is totally based on using your money how much you have and other people's money. So people should be really easy to think about it. It's not a gorilla. It's not a, I say 20,000 gorilla at all. It's a very simple concept, but, and is it hard to understand? No, it's not. See, that's the myth of this. My, I wrote this book, you know, I would love to share that with everybody, the audience, please buy that book. And now today we introduce the audio version also on audible.com. Audible.com, you could be in your car, guys, and you can learn the whole business, how to raise money, how to analyze deals, and how to really, you know, uh, uh, you know use other people's money legally through SEC ruling, Securities and Exchange Commission ruling, so that you could be good at it. And... I mean, you know, you might say, Vinny, oh, I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time. You know what? People who say I don't have time, they don't have time. The people who are very busy, who are very successful, if you ask them, can you meet me in two hours? If there is very pressing thing and it's, a, it's something they cannot get away, I can make time to meet with anybody who's of importance, who's of, you know, going places and things like that. So the thing is, we can carve out time for ourselves. It's more mental than physical and other stuff like that. 
And if we really take time, though, to write it out, I mean, I'll ask the audience or who's watching it, take your time to analyze the time from the time you get up and you go to bed. And every 15 minutes, just to keep a piece of paper and just log in there what you're doing every 15 minutes. It's ridiculous. We will be amazed where we are spending time. I'm telling you, it's going to be mind-boggling. It was mind-boggling for me. <laughs> we, we, we waste, human nature wastes so much time. Now with this whole social media, you know what? One time I was looking and Instagram tracks how much time you spend on Instagram. And one day I was on it for like an hour and a half or something like that. You know, what am I doing? I'm looking at people. I'm, I'm wasting time. What if I was 100% focused for an hour and a half? What could I have done? I could have looked at 20 or 30 properties online. I could have probably found a potential deal. I could have, I could have reached out to 30 people with money and asked, you know, are you interested in doing a partnership deal? I, I buy and sell real estate. We're wasting time. And the thing is, for me, you know, I'm like, I think I came to the realization I'm like 41 years old, right? Like I'm a very driven person, but it's like, wow, I still have to go so far to achieve what I want, you know, out of my life. But yet it's in grasp because I know it's out there, but it's also frustrating. But the thing is, is you have to keep going every day because like it's going to the gym. It's like I'll see results and then I get sabotaged and I start eating junk food again. And then I, I put back weight on. Yeah. But now you have to build your mind and your body so strong that no matter what, you get up out of bed at four in the morning, you splash water on your face, you brush your teeth, you jump in your car, you go to the gym, you yeah. work out for an hour and a half. I already accomplished my fitness thing for the day. Now it's still, I get in the office at 7 a.m. before anybody else is still at the office mm -hmm. for two hours. You just crush it. You focus on your, your most important things. The time somebody first comes in the office, I've already accomplished more than they'll probably do in a full day. And that's what you have to do day in and day out to achieve your goals. And that's what I see you doing to this day. You don't need to be doing it, but at four in the morning, you're texting people, you're connecting people, you're, hey, let's do this, you know, I got a new deal. And that's what it really takes. And and so you got to decide if that's what you want or not. And then at some point, people don't, might not, you know, people don't need to own a $250 million portfolio. <laughs> Maybe somebody's content owning a hundred units and that's all they need to make their yeah. 20, 30 million a month passive income. So you decide what you want in life, but financial freedom can help you achieve so much more and, and you get so much more satisfaction because then you can focus on things you want to do as opposed to things you have to do. No, so you're so right. You know, Bo, I mean, you hit several points. Uh, first of all, you know, one has to really find out, are you happy where you are? Are you happy with the kind of savings you are making, what investments you are making, how much you are earning, W-2 job? You know, are you in a rut or are you happy? Are you really happy what you're doing? Then it's great. You know, you think you are saving for retirement, your kid's education is done, all that stuff. Or you are having a brand, you know, brand newborn baby, right? Hold on. Now you need to have that motivation. The why of life is so important, so important. I mean, you know, I wouldn't be where I am. My friends and other people, you know, uh, they wouldn't be where they are success-wise unless you find out your why. What's the purpose of you living in this world? What's your purpose in, you know, what kind of, uh, you know, retirement and lifestyle and everything you want to have for your children, like you just said, and for yourself. So that's what is the main thing I find. A lot of people wander. Okay, the word is wander. The, we wander through life. We always are saying excuses and excuses and excuses. I'm not this. I'm not that. I can't do this. I can't do that. And, you know, and that takes away the emphasis. Guess what? The more of what we think we don't have, God will give us more of that. Okay, hold on. What I just said. If we think more pain, more struggles, more hardships, more thinking that I don't have money, more thinking that I can't pay my bills, more thinking that I'm not good enough. Guess what? Law of attraction. 
law of attraction and the thought process and the subconscious and the conscious mind is going to give you more of the same thing. It's not going to change it. So what we need to do is make a mind shift of abundance and thinking that I'm good at it. I have the self-respect and the self-esteem comes into play now, right? And feel that I'm the kind of person who is becoming a wonderful person. I'm going to do this. I'm going to, I'm doing it. That's the affirmations, right? We have heard about it. We read about it. We listen about it, but we don't do it. And that's where I remember three by five cards in my life. Many years, I had affirmations written down next to my shaving mirror. I would read it in the car. I had it taped on the dashboard. I mean, those are the things change you. They change you small incrementally, I say, right? Attitude is so important in life, what we want to accomplish. That's, that's funny you just said that because when I was going through that David Goggins book, You Can't Hurt Me, that's yeah. what he did on his, on his he, would, he, would, he had a bald head like me. And every <laughs> morning when he was shaving his head, he would see, you know, his affirmation or his goals, like, you know, yeah. you, whatever it is, right? Like I'm going to buy a, this year I'm going to buy a hundred unit building. Yep. And it's, it's there, you know. I own a hundred unit building. Boom. And then, cause it all comes down to that. I noticed that with myself. Like if I have success, like in my, in my day job, when I'm, when I, I, what do I do? I sell money to real estate investors. So the other day I, I got a good deal off an email. You know, I, I have, we have a team that sent us leads and, and, and these people had uh large portfolios. And, and yep. so I knew that I had, so I, I created a, an email. I sent it to him within like, 30 minutes, he responded back. I'm looking to refinance 15 homes. Boom. <laughs> Call him. I, 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 I talked to him with like two times and uh, he wants to move forward with the deal. So what does that do to me? Okay, that gives me a boost of energy and confidence, right? Totally. That's what you do every day because a lot of us, we're scared to pick up the telephone and talk to somebody. But you got to, you got to, it's okay for people to say they're not interested. But if you're not getting any no's, that means you're not getting any yeses, right? So that's oh, what you got to do. Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. Wow. You know, the, 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 what you just covered is so great. I read that and heard it and I've practiced it from Tommy, Tom Hopkins' book, How to Master the Art of Selling Anything. You're so right, Bo. We need not really go after yeses. The stress and the strain and everything happens when we go after yeses in our life we need to really look at the nose how many nose it will take to get to a yes so now you combine if it takes 10 nose to get one yes that total is 11 all right 10 plus 1 11 now you find out how much is your commission or earnings or whatever or dividends or the payoff whatever you want to say take that total number divide that by 11 so let's just for example Think about we're going to make 11,000 commission in this deal, but I have to see 10 no's to get a yes. So you divide that 11,000 by 11. Guess what? Oh my gosh. Everything is changing in your mind now. Every no you are getting, you should tell your mind, I just made a thousand dollar. Second no, I just made a thousand dollar. Third, no, I just made a thousand dollar. That's all it is because once we take that nicely in our mind and conscious, we are not stressed out. We are looking for the next no and the next no and the next no. Of course, I took a very extreme example. You know, if you're really sucking at it, <laughs> you'll close. Well, in some businesses, you'll close one out of 10 or 12, but in some, you might close every three, you know, or every four. So what am I trying to say is that always love to learn knows and accept rejection. Hold on, guys. I mean, you know, rejection is part of life. Rejection is part of life, you know, and don't be worried about it. It's just it's not personal. It's never personal. Rejection is because what you are showing them, talking to them about, they are having some objections something they are not liking or they want clarification. So objections are amazing, you know? <laughs> right. It was like, for example, 
Vinny and I had a lunch with a, a potential investor, a guy I've known for yes. a long time yesterday. yesterday. Yeah. And yeah. I know, I know he's super conservative. I know because I've known him for all my life that, you know, he's yeah. he's frugal and that's why at a young age he's he's got several million dollars. Yep. yep. But I also yep. know I also know he's very savvy and he's and he's interested in real estate and he's interested in, in making his money work for him and and, right. and getting tax benefits and stuff. So what do we do is we we have a, a lunch and we just educate people about the city process, educate people about multifamily. As I'm learning and learning from Vinny, it's <laughs> great to be in the mix because right, I don't know everything, but when you're around somebody that you can say, Well, why are you doing this? What about the depreciation? What about you know the rub system? That's how I'm gonna learn, right? And at the same time, I can int introduce you know, people in my sphere that are that want to learn about apartments. They want to, they want to take what they have because wherever you're at, you're either you either got money or you don't have money, really, right? Or you have a little bit of money and you got to make it work for you. You're in some position in your life where you need to leverage others and learn from them to get where you want to get, right? Because so I mean, true. there there's a million books out there, right? But so true. you got to find one that you believe in and you got to read it and and really read it you know i think you, if it's a good book you should read it five or six times right so you know i'm doing that i'm i'm very, yeah. <laughs> he's always promoting his book <laughs> right, right. And, and there, there's no excuse right there's no excuse let's say you don't have money like yes let's say you're dying to get into vinny's program but you don't have a few thousand dollars yeah what do you do you go out and spend 20 bucks on a book right you, get, you read that you read that front and back 12 books, $12, sorry, $12. And now in audio, you can have it in your car and listening to it every day, going, coming, going, coming. That's how I learned this business, Bo, in the car. That's the automobile university, I call it. <laughs> you know, let's not listen to, you know, the talk show host and don't listen to this, all this crappy news on the, on the, in the car. You know, listen to something productive. So that we can make a difference, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, well, let's let's recap what we talked about today. We talked yeah. about um, it's okay to get no's. The yeah. more no's you get, the more no's you get means the more yeses you get. Yes. We talked about you have to be a hundred percent committed. Yes. Right. We talked about learning and and absorbing information and taking massive action. I mean, right there is the whole key to everything. If you can just master mm -hmm. those things we just talked about sure go out. Go, and you mentioned yeah. about the funnel the click the funnel is so important yeah. in business you know you've got to be always looking at who is in the hopper you know clients need to be there if they are not why not you know delegate prioritize delegate prioritize you know delegate other people there are so many companies like you said you know our friend from Sacramento, he's got great virtual assistant company and everything. Use virtual assistants. Guys, I get so much done because of virtual assistants. I'm not good at a lot of things, but you, for such a small price, you know, if you can get somebody to do your job uh, or the things that you don't like for $7 or $10 an hour, and you're making, you know, $50, $100 an hour or whatever, it's well worth it. So yeah, assistance, you know what? assistance is so important in our life, you know? Yeah. Uh-huh. We should uh yeah, let's you know it'd be fun. Let's bring on uh like Daniel Ramsey on our we Friday should. show. Yeah. We should bring on one person and then you know we'll 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 pick them up. We should bring on one person that would add value every week or let's every other there. week. I think that'll be amazing. That'll be amazing, yeah. Bo. You have such good uh, contact with so many people. I do too in the Bay Area, in San Francisco Bay Area. And let's charge it up. I think also we are doing, I just wanted to remind everybody, Bo, myself, and Bobby Sharma will be coming out and holding meetings. Actually, we have November 4th, 5th, and 6th allocated. So please look for the dates and the times and everything because we'll be coming and we'll be giving so much information. We will educate. We are not out there to do anything but to educate, to see how we could help you if you would like us to, to get above average returns and get equity positions you know, in the real estate market. That's where we are all about. 
And then again, you know, we can also discuss more about goal setting and which you and I are doing this show. It's a real estate and goal setting and taking your business to a next notch. That's right. Well, so yeah, so we'll, the next couple calls, either next week we'll do a screen share where we share one of your PowerPoints on a, on a, on a case study. Okay. Or maybe we, yeah. we, we could show how the money flows in, flows out, and the numbers of a deal and what a passive investor might, might have made. And you know, just It'll be exciting. I'll be in Florida yeah. just to let you know. I'll chime in from Florida, and if I'm at one of our assets, I can even you know do it live right from there, and that'll be tremendous. Yes, yes. Then I'm All at right. Gino conference also. Bo, a few of the people are traveling. I know Mario, Chase, several people are traveling from here to go out there to Florida. And uh, I'll be speaking also. I do want to mention it next Wednesday. Today's Friday. Next Wednesday, if you're near Tampa, Orlando, please come out to Tampa. TJ Hines uh, has put together a great, great, uh, uh, you know, meetup group for me. 70 people I heard, 75 people. I'll be speaking there six o'clock in the evening for about two hours. Then I go to a banquet, a dinner banquet, I think. They are organizing for the high net worth individuals in Point uh, Point Clear, uh, Florida, right there in Tampa. So that's next Wednesday night. I'll be in Orlando, uh, also speaking at five o'clock onward in Orlando. If anybody is interested, please see me there. And then I'm in Orlando again, speaking on uh, Friday. And then in Orlando at the uh, uh, Gaylord Palms. I'm speaking at Jake and Gino's conference with Dylan Marma. Uh, had the stage for one hour there. And then on the panel on uh, Sunday, also there. And then I'll be in Houston. Anybody who's near Houston, reach out to us. I would love to do the, you know, come to your meetup group there. Houston, I'll be there the, the following Monday, Tuesday, and uh, so forth. So, you know, there is some good schedules coming up next week. And let's make it happen. And then in the Bay Area, we are doing very well and we are promoting it. We're going to start kicking in high gear about our meetings coming up November 4th, 5th, and 6th. I write here Silicon Valley, San Jose, San Francisco, and in the East Bay. Right, Bo? That's right. Very good. All right, guys. Well, happy Friday. Have a good weekend. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much, guys. See you next week. Take care. And...